All right, let's do that same problem that we just did, but let's do it on Excel. Excel's our friend. This can be a little difficult for me because I'm just simply holding my phone camera here, but we're going to do it. Uh, first thing we want to do is create kind of the template that we're going to use. So we're going to have our activity. We're going to have uh, a lot of times within the activity, we, we can actually have more information here, such as who the predecessors are. I can't type in video at the same time. Predecessor. Not that my spelling's any good anyway. First thing we want to put down here is going to be our optimistic time, remember? Do you remember what optimistic time should be referenced with? That's right, we'll do a lowercase a. Just for fun, let's make these all centered so that everything looks pretty. And let's use that same format for the next few items. Okay, after my optimistic, I also want to have my pessimistic. What's my pessimistic represented by? Lowercase b. Then finally I have my most likely or more probable. Most probable is going to be represented by M. After I have those times down, the next thing I'm going to want to calculate is what my uh, estimated time is. My estimated time is going to be represented by TE. In order then to answer the questions I want to answer, I'm going to need a standard deviation. And not only a standard deviation, but we're going to, have to turn that standard deviation into a project variance. Once I have all those items, uh, let's do it like this. Project variance. Sorry for my camera sliding around a bunch. I can then answer the question of what's the probability of completing this within a certain amount of time. Let's go ahead and put this a uh, little bit of work in here. My numbers, I've got a, B, C, ah, crud. Hit and shift instead of enter. B, C, D, E, and F. Predecessors, I'm not going to worry about it on this one because I already know what they're going to be. I got a whole bunch of numbers in. I wonder if I could just pause and then merge this together. That would be easier. 17. Hold on, I'm going to switch it to the bigger camera for a minute. This is silly. You don't want to watch me type all the numbers. We're going to pause it, which may mean it has to be another video. To be continued. All right. Now that I have my numbers in my spreadsheet, uh, of course, I put them in the wrong spot, didn't I? Not looking good. Now I can start to do my first formula for my estimation. Now do you remember what that formula is? It is simply A plus 4 times M, because we're giving M a weight of 4, plus B, divide that whole thing by 6, because A1, M times 4, that's 5, and B is our sixth number. So we're simply averaging six numbers together. To do it in Excel, we're going to hit our equal sign, we're going to do a little parenthesis, and then we're going to have A plus, do another parenthesis. And this is where we can do four, well, let's just click on our M, times 
four, close out that parenthesis, add to that RB. Put a parenthesis around that whole puppy, and then let's divide that whole number by the number six. Enter, and we now have our estimated time for that particular activity. I'm gonna simply take that and drag it down. That's gonna drag that formula down and copy it for all of these. I only had to enter the formula once, now I'm all set to go. Who recalls what our formula for standard deviation is? That's correct, simply our pessimistic minus our optimistic divided by six. So once again, I'm gonna do an equal and I'm gonna open up a parenthesis. I'm gonna put in my pessimistic, subtract my optimistic, close out that parenthesis and divide that whole thing by six. Once I do that, I can take that number, drag it all the way down, or that formula, and drag it all the way down. Project variance. To get my project variance, I'm going to take the sum of the critical path items, the, actually the sum of the critical path standard deviations. <laughs> well, make it even more complicated. I'm going to take the sum, uh, well, the square root of the sum of the standard of the... Scratch that part. I'm gonna take the square root of the sum of the standard deviation squared for the critical path. All right, doesn't make sense, stick with me. Basically, let's do it one step at a time. First, let's just simply square these items. That means we're gonna times it by itself. We can do this J6 times J6, or we can do J6 with a little caret symbol like that and a two, which means it's gonna take it to that second power. Let's hit enter and hope that works. Sure enough, it worked. Now I can do that same thing, drag that formula down. They're all being squared. Down here is where I really want to put my project variance formula. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. This formula is the square root. So I'm going to type SQRT. And that's going to give me a square root formula. I'm going to then put a parenthesis. But it's the square root of the sum of the critical path items. So I'm going to take now type sum, which is starting off another formula. I'm going to put another parenthesis. Now within that sum, I'm going to come up here and click just on my critical path items. My critical path was A, B, D, and F. I'm going to close out that sum parenthesis. Oops, I didn't close it out. Close out that sum parenthesis, and I'm going to close out the entire parenthesis and hit enter. I now have the sum, the square root of the sum of the critical path items. With that, I can now move on to get my Z score. Let's do this first. We need to have our project duration as well. So this is our project variance. Let's give that a little symbol so it looks like it's done. Our project variance, same thing. We just want to add up that critical path. Sometimes for fun, it's probably not a bad idea just to come over here and type what that critical path is so that we can keep it fresh in our mind. In this case, our critical path is A, B, D, and F. So since that's my critical path, same thing here, I'm gonna to want to do a sum, open up a parenthesis, and just choose those same items. A, oops. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. It's not working too well for me. B, D, and F. Close that out. That's where I get my 64 days, just like we had done previously, previously on the board. Although I think on the board I had said 65, but I meant 64. 64 days with a project variance of six. Now, to get a z-score out of all that, I 
I need to have a target. So remember what the target was that they gave us. Let's strike target here. Somebody comes in and they say, can you do this thing in 67 days? I say, well, I'm expecting to do it in 64 days. I have a standard deviation or a project variance of six days. So 67 shouldn't be a problem. And they say, well, what's the actual probability that you can do that? Well, to get the probability, I need the z-score first. So if you remember right, my formula for z-score is simply going to be my target, subtract my estimated time, divided by my project variance. So let's plug that in. Once again, I'm going to open up a parenthesis. My target minus my estimated time divided by my project variance. There's that z-score of 0.5 that we talked about earlier. Now, I still can't answer with a z-score. I need to be able to say what a probability is. I can't do, say, I can't say z-score of 0.5. Most people don't know what that means. To turn that z-score into a probability, I can go to one of those probability z-score charts, or I can simply use a little function in Excel known as norm dot s dot d i s t what that's going to ask me for now that i have that formula going just for fun i'm going to let it walk us through so let's come up here since we got norm dot s dot disk going hit this little function button ah sorry that's not what i wanted it to do I gotta type that again. Equals norm.s.s. See how it starts to come up? I'm gonna double click on it this time. I double click on it, it tells me I want an X, I want a mean, standard deviation, and I want a cumulative. So what we're really gonna do here is we're gonna take as our X, that's gonna be our target. So then we do a comma. That moves us over to our mean. Our mean is gonna be 64, because that's our, our weighted average or estimate. And I'm going to do a comma. My standard deviation, which in this case my standard deviation is my project variance. I click on that. Now I'm going to do a comma. Now in this case you can see it's not even asking me what my z-score is, but this is doing roughly the same thing as, as calculating onto the z-score. I'm going to type true here because this is cumulative. Don't ask me what that means. Not all that important. By doing that I can now hit enter. Boom, it gives me a probability. Of 0.69. If you go out and look at a z-score chart for 0.5, you'll get that same probability of 0.69. There are other functions we could do that would look just right at that z-score and calculate that over to a probability as well. But I kind of like this norm.s.dist because it seems to to work well. If you truly understand that, you also don't need to put the z-score in. The problem is on the CAPM exam, some of the questions might actually walk you through getting the z-score first and then giving you a table and asking you to turn the table into a probability. So I really need you to know how to calculate that z-score. All right. If you have any questions on how to do that, slow it down, go back through, hit pause a few times, and, and hopefully it'll work for you. Otherwise, give me a call, email, whatever it might be. Hopefully this is not too sloppy. Thanks.